So welcome back to the channel. I've finally got this making some noise. Now I'm not saying that the quality is anything to be shouting about but um, it is actually working. So I thought I would share um, what I had to do to uh, to make this function. So first thing is um, on the last video I said that I wasn't going to plug in the JCAT cards as it would be simpler just to use the motherboard. Um, turns out that there's a problem with that and that is that the network cards um, are not compatible, as far as I can see on the motherboard, not compatible with Euphony. Now this is Euphony, as you can see here I've just hooked this up to a television, um, which is fine, it works. Now I just want to talk you through quickly how I got this up and running, um, to save you a lot of hassle. So, um, as you've seen before, network is hooked up in exactly the same way as we had in the last video nothing new here apart from the fact that I fitted the card now these network cards as you can see here um, I've got the external power going into it you can power these from behind uh, there's a converter at the back uh, it's an ATX port I can't remember the name of it to be honest um, however there are no switches on this that tell you um, is it external or computer powered so you don't have to do anything uh, in this case I've simply plugged in my 5 volt power supply um, my Sean Jacobs is finally back and um, for the networking you can see this ridiculously red uh, Wireworld connector here I've gone straight in from my router so I've bypassed all, all my additional bits and pieces here I've got the uh, Ether Regen which I'm not using right now just for simplicity's sake um, this is a Linksys router and as I say it just seems to work straight out of the box here. Now um, how do you get these working? Well uh, just here you can see there's a USB stick which I plugged in. This is what I was talking about earlier with the FAT32 installation of uh, Euphony. So what I'm going to do now um, just to say if you're not sure plug it into the same port I have if you've got the same motherboard. Uh, seems to work. Um, in terms of USB outputs and so on, we'll talk about those in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run you through the boot sequence. I'm going to turn this off um, just to show you uh, what this thing does. So let's turn that off. Okay, right. Um, very handy having a television down here. It saves me lugging my monitor downstairs. So just going to power this up. And actually while we're there... You can see all, all of the stuff I was talking about earlier with these lights cycling through on the right hand side and these codes cycling through. Um, so just coming to the screen now to show you what that's doing. Um, you can see here, this is actually it's immediately gone through to the uh, Euphony Linux boot which is running off that USB drive. And if you leave it, you'll see this now, it's just going to do its setup. Isn't very much more complicated than this. Once the once the kit is in place, this just works. Um, and there you go. And the fact it's saying Euphony's up and ready. Now, when I was running through the other uh, network, uh, just running from the one on the board, I wasn't getting this far. It was it was just basically saying um, it's asking me to log in for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. And I wasn't getting anything like HTTP 192.168.1. 110 which you can see on the screen none of this was here so it blatantly wasn't working it did not like the network cards that were on board the motherboard um, so once you're in like this then you are literally going to http forward slash you can see that I won't give you the wrong name here but the, the euphony address at the top and I'm going to show you what's on the laptop um, which is the next step Okay, so I'm going to just quickly show you how to install Euphony Stylus. Uh, Stylus is actually their player. Um, Euphony is the software itself. And what I have here is a USB drive. Now, you'll notice here that um, I've got this uh, drive actually partitioned into two. Now, the reason for this is I want to use a FAT32 um, file type and 32 gigabytes is... Uh, is the maximum for that. Now, why does that matter? Well, if you have a 64 gig card, you're going to have to do what I've done here. Now, I won't go into this because it's complicated, but my suggestion is to get a 
USB stick that is under 32 gig. Um, and basically all I'm going to do here um, is, is format this, um, as you can see. It's going to warn me, FAT32, uh, perform a quick format. Most of these um, devices come with an, an already formatted uh, USB anyway, but I just thought I'd cover that in case anyone gets stuck. Okay, so you can see that my USB drive here is FAT32 and so on. Right. Right, so now I've got uh, Euphony Styles written into Google. I'm going to press return on that one. Um, and you can see here, I'm going to get the uh, the main operating system and here is euphonyaudio.com this is the one we want so a very nice website um, so if I scroll down here you can see there are there are two different things here so I've got the music server software and I've got a endpoint music server um, I'm just going to use the euphony stylus which is um, just the server software that's all I need for my computer and if I click that <coughs> this takes me into a lot of information about what it does and I can download the free trial so I click on this one and it's going to basically just uh, ask me to click on this and you can see in the left hand corner I've now got my euphony download zip and I just need to extract this So here's my download, you see Euphony Downloader, um, it's gone straight into this which is very handy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Um, so here's the bars that basically tell you how it's getting on. Um, but first thing I need to do here is decide what to write to. So you can see this generic 58.9 uh, gigabytes, this is my USB drive. You'll see actually that within these, I'm not sure what the what this SMI one is in here for, but there are no other drives, so um, it seems to be intelligent. It's not going to let me select my hard disk, um, but obviously be very careful with that. You don't want to overwrite everything. Um, so all I'm going to do now is just click go. OK, so um, final point to make here. Uh, as you can see, I've got my USB plugged in here. Um, I'm not sure which of these is best. I, I think at some point I will actually try the the JCAT USB card. Um, given that this is working, there's, there's not much to lose now. Um, so one of the things you have to do, which I haven't gone through yet, is register the software in order to get it off the USB stick. So obviously, in general, you don't want to be running off a USB stick. That's not how it works. And we've got all of those trial version warnings kicking off as well. So uh, there will be an installation procedure once you've paid for the software. Um, and that will allow you to put it onto the hard disk in your computer. As far as I'm aware, on the trial version, you cannot install it onto your hard disk. So you are always running off this little USB disk. Um, obviously, that's not great. Um, but at least it shows you that it's working. Um, I would say that's very helpful, because why would you buy software if you weren't sure if you could get it up and running? Um, yeah, so that's my uh, couple of hours messing about. Um, as I say, the big one there was the network card. Um, obviously, if the onboard onboard networking wasn't going to work, and I'm out of focus again, um, if the onboard networking wasn't going to work, then um, I'm lucky I've got this external uh, network card. Um, I'm not actually sure what you would do. Um, it's probably worth contacting. Yeah, I'm completely out of focus now. Um, it's probably worth you contacting Euphony um, and asking them what what happens. If you um, if you are running, let's say, a motherboard card like that, what what do you have to do to get it up and running, or whether or not you even can get it up and running? Um, and do excuse the blurry picture at the end here. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, obviously, I'm I'm going to look at getting this properly working, like get some decent tracks through it, and probably pay for the license. Um, that will give me a much better idea uh, of what this can do, you know, performance-wise. Um, but for now, uh, thankfully, I've got some sound.